So we've made several videos about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and humanistic psychology. And you may be familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, or you may not. You may also not know that his hierarchy has actually been extended. So in this video, we're going to look at the extended hierarchy of human needs. So one thing that we've tried to make clear in previous videos, but may not always come across, is that Maslow's hierarchy of needs is actually a motivational theory. It is his look at what actually motivates people to do the things that they do, to behave the way that they behave. And so throughout this video, I want you to keep that in mind. So basically the theory goes that we're all humans and we all have certain needs. And when those needs are not being met, it will actually motivate us or put us into action toward trying to fulfill those needs. So in other words, it's these human needs that we all share that actually motivate us to do the things that we do. So Maslow's original hierarchy of needs contained five different levels, and the extended version has eight different levels of needs. The first four we could call the basic needs. Maslow also referred to these needs as the deficiency needs, because if you were ever in deficiency on any of these needs, it would certainly motivate you into action. The four remaining needs could be called the higher order needs. Um, they could also be referred to as the growth needs. Maslow referred to them as the being needs because they deal mostly with self-actualization and actually being the most that you can be. So now we're going to go through each of these eight levels of needs, starting with the basic needs at the bottom and moving all the way to the top to the higher order needs. Now throughout the video, I'm going to cite some examples of ways that I personally, or ways that I've observed others, um, being motivated by a desire or need to fulfill these various needs. And I would ask that you also kind of think to yourself and maybe even jot notes or comments to yourself of ways that you've seen other people be motivated by a need to fulfill the various needs we're gonna talk about. So the first level of the very most basic needs are our physiological needs. So those are our actual, the physical needs of our physical body to survive. So that's water, food, um, are you able to sleep? And it's really easy to see that all of us are motivated, motivated by those needs. Um, if we're hungry, we want to eat. If we're thirsty, we'll look for water. If we are swimming in a swimming pool and we will run out of air, we're going to swim up to the top as quickly as we possibly can so that we can get to that oxygen and survive. Another example would be to think about a country that has maybe been stricken by a really horrible drought and there's no food, there's no water. And suddenly the primary thing motivating you every single day is just a need to find food or find water so that your physical body can survive. Now Maslow estimated that around 85% of Americans were satisfying those basic physiological needs. Um, I personally would kind of disagree and we'll get into that in a future video, so stay tuned. So the next level that I wanna discuss is the safety needs. So that is the need for us to actually feel that we're not in physical danger, to have shelter, to have some sense of security and safety. So some examples of the safety needs would be me last week taking my car to the shop, getting all my tires rotated and tire pressure checked just to ensure the safety of my vehicle. Um, another example might be somebody staying in a job that they really dislike where what would really motivate someone to stay in a job that they really couldn't stand being at every day except for the safety and security that comes from having that paycheck? This could also correspond to maybe somebody staying um, in a bad relationship or even an abusive relationship because there's some sense of security and safety that comes from the familiarity of staying with that person. So thinking about satisfying the safety needs, I think it's important to recognize that when our safety needs are not being met or we have some fear that we won't be able to meet our safety needs, won't be able to pay our rent or something like that, um, what usually happens is 
stress and anxiety. And most of the time when I think about I'm stressed out, I have a lot of anxiety, it often kind of can lead back to fulfilling those safety needs and having some sort of fear of my safety or fear of my condition that causes me to feel some anxiety, causes me to feel some stress, all because I'm not meeting my safety needs. Uh, Maslow somewhat optimistically estimated that around 75% of Americans are fulfilling their safety needs. And so let's go on to the next one. So the third level of needs um, in our basic needs are the love and belonging needs or social needs. So this is the need for us to communicate with others, to have intimate relationships with others. This is your friends, your family, and your intimate or sexual relationships. This in general is just that need to be social and have interaction with other people. So when your love and belonging needs are not being met, what happens? We start feeling isolated. We start feeling alone. So we're feeling lonely, we're feeling depressed, we start introverting. Um, and for me, when I start getting into a place where I'm feeling like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere, I don't want to talk to anyone, I really like, I'm feeling anxiety about going into a social situation, I'll just kind of say, you know what, Karina, just chalk it up and get out there. Because once I am in a social situation or I'm talking with my friends or talking with my family, um, just that basic satisfying that very basic need of interacting with someone and communicating with someone, um, it really does a lot. And I think it's a really important need that we need to remember, you know, this is one of our basic needs, being social, being communicating. Maslow estimated that 50% of people satisfied this need. And that brings us to our next need. Have you ever known somebody who um, fishes for compliments? Well, it's because they're trying to fulfill the last of the basic needs, and those are the esteem needs. Now, Maslow made an important distinction on the esteem needs. That one part is your reputation, or what other people think of you, and the other part is your self-respect, or what you think of yourself. Um, so a great example of somebody trying to fulfill some esteem needs on the reputation side um, might be somebody driving a really, really fancy car or maybe getting um, a breast augmentation surgery or something like that. Something where they're really trying to affect the way that other people see them. Um, you also have instances where people um, either fish for compliments or may even invalidate other people to try and make them feel better about themselves. So looking at the self-respect side of this coin, um, there's a really great saying out there, the people that matter don't judge and the people that judge don't matter. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind here because ultimately we have pretty limited control over what other people think of us. There's really not you know, we have a certain amount of control over how we present ourselves, but the only place we can really exert 100% control is what we think of ourselves and what kind of self-confidence we have, what is our internal environment and the way that we're thinking about ourselves. So Maslow estimated that only about 40% of people are satisfying their um, esteem needs. And that'll bring us to the higher order needs. So before we move on, let's look one more time at the basic needs. So that's our physiological, safety, love and belonging, and esteem needs. Now Maslow kind of considered these four basic needs as um, coping behavior. So when you're fulfilling these needs, you're really at the most basic level of survival and trying to cope with life. So now we're moving into the higher order or growth needs. Now this first one that we're gonna talk about actually comes from Maslow's extended hierarchy of needs, and it is the need to understand. So this could be cognitive needs, um, needs to know things, and for me, this is something that I can definitely relate with. Um, 
all throughout college, I was really driven by a desire to know things, to understand things. Um, it's those cognitive needs that are maybe why there's the Discovery Channel or the History Channel, these different sources that are just kind of giving information out there, trying to satisfy that human need that we have to know things. Now, Mikey, the guy on the other side of the camera who actually started Psyche Truth, has a huge, huge cognitive need. He spends most of his time watching documentaries, reading books, doing coursework that's not required for school or job or anything like that. Um, but he has a huge desire to have more understandings, to have more knowledge. And if you're watching this video, it's because there's a part of you that's trying to fulfill your need to understand. So the next level um, also comes from the extended version of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and it is aesthetic needs. So a need for beauty, order, symmetry, different ways that that's been described. And essentially just that as humans, we have a desire for beauty. And I think that that can be seen in a couple different cases. Um, for me, I find um, nature and being outdoors just the most incredibly beautiful and aesthetic experience and I know that I have a personal need to experience that aesthetic beauty on a regular basis. Um, another example might be um, Mikey who is really into photography and creating beauty, creating beautiful things um, through that outlet. Um, another might be um, that I'm in really interested in, in making music. I'm a musician, and so one of the ways that I satisfy my aesthetic needs is to create music and share that with people. Um, people who aren't musicians um, also will still enjoy really beautiful music, um, all kind of relating to those um, aesthetic needs. Our next level is the self-actualization needs. So that is being who you are, being the best person that you can be, really living up to your true potential. So one interesting thing about the self-actualization needs is that one of the characteristics that Maslow listed is morality. And so why is morality a part of self-actualization needs? And um, so Maslow was pretty optimistic about people and generally thought that for the most part, humans were well-meaning. Um, so when people did bad things, he reconciled it or explained it as an attempt to satisfy some of the other needs. So examples might be, um, if you are really in a state of starvation, you have no food, um, you might steal from someone else in order to satisfy those physiological needs. Um, if your safety needs are threatened and you're really living in a constant state of fear and anxiety, you may be violent towards someone else in order to protect yourself or feel that you're protecting yourself. Um, in some cases, people in an attempt to satisfy love and belonging needs may actually have an affair or cheat on the person that they're with. So it's kind of a dysfunctional way of attempting to satisfy these other needs. Um, people who are really strongly attempting to satisfy their esteem needs may even be um, mean to other people or invalidate other people or even be physically abusive to someone else so that they can somehow feel better about themselves. So some other aspects of the self-actualization needs are creativity, spontaneity, acceptance, and fulfilling your personal potential or being as good as you can be at whatever it is that you're really interested in. So a big part of that is finding your purpose, finding that thing that really drives you and motivates you. So for me, that's playing music. When do I feel the most like myself, the most just euphoric? It's when I'm performing or sharing my music with people. Um, for Mikey, it's photography, it's producing these videos, it's helping facilitate understanding for other people, something that really drives him and really helps him feel that he's meeting his full potential. So Maslow estimated that about 10% of Americans were meeting some of their self-actualization needs, 
and that only 2% were actually meeting all of their self-actualization needs. Among college students, he estimated that 0.1% of students were meeting their self-actualization needs. So this brings us to our final level of needs, and that is the transcendence needs. Now, this level is literally um, looking beyond yourself, beyond your selfish needs, beyond any of the needs we've talked about before, and actually is a need to help others reach their full potential or to help others in general. So um, this would be compassion, sympathy, um, empathy, those true virtues that are taught by so many of the different philosophies and that really come right down to you care more about everyone else around you than you do about yourself. You're willing to take time out of your day or effort out of your life to really try and help other people. And Maslow um, theorized in his hierarchy that those, um, those feelings, those virtues could only be met once you were truly satisfying all of your other needs. Now, Eastern philosophies um, are all trying to attain a state of enlightenment. And for all intents and purposes, um, meeting those transcendence needs um, is really kind of the equal of that state of enlightenment, which is truly being in touch with the sense that there is a universal con consciousness, a universal connection between each and every one of us and the earth that we're living on, that there really is a universal brotherhood, and that by doing things to help our fellow humans out, we're actually doing a whole lot to help ourselves as well. So looking back at our hierarchy of needs, I want to point out a couple more things. One is that when you are satisfying these basic needs or the coping needs, um, usually this is uh, more of a situation with some instant gratification, but not necessarily long-lasting gratification. So really easy examples to see would be you're hungry, you eat, you feel really gratified and stuff for a minute, but it's not something that really lasts a long time. Another example might be um, you know, having a one night stand or finding someone, you know, that you hook up with short for a short time or something. And you get some love and belonging gratification from that, but it doesn't really stick. It doesn't last. And when you're addressing the higher order needs, um, this is when you're really dealing with what makes you happy. So maybe it's not as intense amount of gratification as receiving a compliment from someone or something like that, but it's the kind of um, pleasure, the kind of, you know, satisfying your needs that really lasts and is really going to bring you happiness. So to take that one step further, you could ask yourself, how does it make you feel when you really, really help someone with something? Or how do you feel when you really feel like you've found some purpose and you're really going after your goals and you're really making steps towards reaching your goals? Um, the sense of happiness that you get from those things is just way more meaningful and way more long lasting than the happiness that you get um, from having a really delicious meal. Now, even when you eat a really delicious meal, this is a very gratifying experience, but it just doesn't quite compare to how good it makes you feel when you've really helped someone. Um, so I would theorize that happiness um, pretty much comes down to the satisfaction of these higher order needs. So truly caring for other people and truly helping other people. Um, 
finding your purpose, finding your meaning in life, what really drives you, and then doing those things and how motivating that is to be doing something that makes you really feel like you're fulfilling your potential, um, to experiencing beauty and to learning. How good does it feel when you understand something you've never understood before or you find out something new that you never knew before? Um, that's a really incredible feeling. And I think that there is a lot to be gained by looking at this hierarchy of needs and using it to our best advantage um, so that we can help attain the happiness that Maslow talked about. So that brings us to the end of my discussion of Maslow's extended hierarchy of needs. 